All right, everybody, welcome back to uh, another episode of Hawk Droppings with me, Hawk. Um, I'm recording this about 9 p.m. on Tuesday, July 30th. There was uh, an article that came out yesterday in Rolling Stone about swing state election officials that are also pro-Trump election deniers. And I have a lot of problems with this article, which I will explain. Um, But I think it's an opportunity to have a broader conversation on things. Um, You know, what 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 do Trump MAGA Republicans want at this point? They don't want any more elections. Uh, They have no use for elections anymore. Today's version of the Republican Party under Donald Trump and MAGA uh, has become an authoritarian movement, and they want the installation of a dictator, an authoritarian, theocratic dictator in the United States. Uh, And they want to impose their will on all of us who are not like them and they believe they have a divine right to do these things. They believe that God is calling them uh, to quote unquote, take our country back to save America from these godless heathens on the left because they've been fed 25 years worth of bullshit on Fox news. And over the last decade, right-wing media has gotten much more extreme in telling its listeners and viewers that people like me and people like you on the left are not merely people who they disagree with politically, but that we are evil. In biblical terms, we are evil, uh, godless, you know, whatever, and they believe that God has chosen them for this time right now to save this great nation that God loves more than any other country on the planet. So it's like, first of all, it's like when that's your starting point, I, you know, and They have no use anymore for elections. They have no use anymore for anything in the United States that represents or resembles any kind of democratic governance. And which, you know, it's like we we, we all love hearing that catchphrase from these Gomer Chuds. It seems to be the only thing that they can actually spell correctly. Uh, on on TikTok in the comments, we're not a democracy, we're a constitutional republic, which is like saying, I'm not holding a piece of fruit in my hand, I'm holding an apple. Uh, You know, constitutional republic is a form of democracy. I mean, whatever. But what what are they really telling you when they say that? Because what they're really telling you feeds into everything I'm gonna talk about over the next half hour. What they are telling you is that not everybody's vote should count and that some people's votes should count more than others. That's what they are saying when they tell you that we're not a pure democracy where everybody has an equal voice on everything. We are a constitutional republic. And again, you know, it's like they get everything about the founding of this country wrong because they think all of the founding fathers uh, were evangelical Christians. They weren't. They were not theists, meaning theology. They were not, uh, they were deists, which means they believed in a deity, God, the creator, but not as the evangelicals believe theism. They did not believe in a certain form of religion and a God who gets upset when he watches you masturbate, which why is God watching people masturbate? First of all, I mean, come on. I never really understood that, but apparently he kills a kitten every time he watches you guys masturbate. So you may want to think about that next time. 
Um, you know, and, and so, but it's like, you know, how does, how does that stuff, you know, where does the rubber meet the road on these things? And, you know, this, you know, this Rolling Stone article, I think it's fear mongering. I think it's clickbait. I think it's overblown. They found 70 pro Trump conspiracists, uh, operating as election officials in key battleground States. Uh, where there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of other election workers who are not pro-Trump election denying conspiracists. And, you know, the problem that I have with this article (laughs) is a few things. One, they don't clarify the difference between 2020 when Trump tried all of this shit and 2024 by saying that in 2020, Donald Trump was in office. He was the incumbent sitting president of the United States in full control of the executive branch. And he couldn't get it done then. Despite his best efforts, which have resulted in felony charges for him and a few dozen of his little buddies. Um, The article does not make clear that Donald Trump is not in office right now and does not have the power of the executive branch uh, to use as he sees fit to try to remain in power. He's not in power right now. Second, as I just said, you know, it's like, so they found 70 of these people. Okay, we're a country of 330 million people and there are thousands and thousands of other election workers in these states, swing states and counties that are not election denying pro-Trump MAGA conspiracists. Um, so I got some issues with this article, uh, but we're going to talk about some other things as well. And plus it's like, you know, they also don't, they, there's one sentence, one part of one sentence in this article that says these challenges have not held up in court. I don't know. That seems significant in this kind of an article where you're telling people that 70 people are going to take over the entire election process. But, you know, what do I know? And, you know, so they found these 70 whack jobs. Um, so it's like, and, and Republicans are doing all of these things after 2020 and Every single fucking thing that we're dealing with in the United States of America politically right now is the result of two things. Donald Trump's ego and the fact that he couldn't handle losing to Joe Biden in 2020. It caused him such a narcissistic psychic injury that he just could not handle it. And therefore it was like, well, that didn't happen. The second thing is the weakness of Mitch McConnell and Senate Republicans in failing to convict him during his impeachment trial for trying to overturn the 2020 election. They could have ended this. 17 Republicans could have ended this then. Donald Trump would never have been eligible to run in any federal election ever again had they convicted him and removed him. Interestingly, Apologies for that. I've I've been sick for a couple days. Uh, During that impeachment trial, Mitch McConnell said one of the reasons, and many other Republicans said, one of the reasons we're not going to convict him at an impeachment trial is because we still have a criminal justice system. He can be charged criminally. Well, he was. He was. And then he went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court granted him broad immunity. Whoops. Whoops. But Mitch McConnell and seven and sixteen other Senate Republicans could have put an end to this four years ago, and they chose not to do that. Um, but these seventy whack jobs, you know, apparently the allegation is that they're simply going to refuse to certify the election results in certain counties uh, where they've become election commissioners. Uh, in in swing states like Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada. Um, And as I said in a TikTok earlier today, well, let's start with this. 
Well, I'm going to include North Carolina in that list of swing states. So we're going to talk about seven swing states that are going to decide this election. I'm including North Carolina right now because there have been some demographic changes. Donald Trump won North Carolina by like 1.2% in 2020. Uh, and the governor, the secretary of state, and the attorney general in North Carolina are all Democrats. That same thing is true in Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Those states all have Democratic governors, Democratic secretaries of state, and Democratic attorneys general. Georgia is the only swing state that has three Republicans in those positions, governor, secretary of state, attorney general. But in the 2020 election, these three same people, Brian Kemp, governor, Brad Raffensperger, secretary of state, and their attorney general, all refused to participate in Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Fellas, come on, I need you to find me 11,780 votes. Joe, which the, that's just ridiculous in itself because Joe Biden won Georgia by 11,789 votes. Did Donald Trump seriously think those guys were just going to be like, oh, we found 11,780 votes, therefore Donald Trump won the state of Georgia by one single vote and that that was going to fly with the voters of Georgia, that was going to fly with the American people. Donald Trump is an incredibly dumb person. Unfortunately for us, all of his followers are too. Makes things inconvenient and uncomfortable for the rest of us. His supporters are the stupidest fucking people I've ever encountered in my entire life. Uh, the state of Nevada, while it has a Republican governor, there are Democrats serving in the offices of Secretary of State and Attorney General. Elections are challenged at the state level, initially. Uh, before you can ever go to federal court. So we have Democratic secretaries of state and Democratic attorneys general in all seven of these swing states. And Democrat serving as governor in five of those seven swing states. So even if those, like, like Pennsylvania, the houses are split. There's a Democratic... Uh, I can't remember which is which. I think there's a Democratic House and a Republican Senate. It's one of those two things in the state of Pennsylvania. So it's like between Election Day and Inauguration Day, they're not passing any legislation because it's not going to be signed by a Democratic governor. Um, and I think Wisconsin might, well, North Carolina has Republican supermajorities in their House and their Senate. That's how they passed their horrific abortion ban in that state because they overrode the governor's veto. Um, but, you know, that's, that's not covered in Rolling Stone's article. So I'm very, and plus it's like there are 10 or 11 weeks between election day and inauguration day. So say you get some MAGA Trump humping, inbred mouth breathing Gomer MAGA chud, who's an election worker, uh, in some small county in Georgia. And, you know, I'm not going to certify the results of this election. Well, that state's attorney general is going to take that election person to court. <laughs> and the court's going to be like, what is your evidence? You have to have a reason for refusing to certify your election results. What is your evidence? You don't have any? Okay, then I'm going to give you 24 hours to certify this election, or I'm going to have somebody else do it for you as has happened multiple times since the 2020 election in some of these states where you get these maggot sheds in there and they're like, I'm refusing to certify. They, the state attorney general just takes them to court and they handle it. They take care of it. It causes delay, you know, but again, it's like another thing that this article didn't clarify or spell out or even address in 2020, Donald Trump was in office. And so if for whatever reason, all of this shit was delayed, there was a possibility that he would just remain in office. Well, Joe Biden's in office now and Kamala Harris is vice president. She's president of the Senate. She's the one who's going to be dealing with electoral votes on January 6th. She's probably going to certify her own victory 
on January 6th when the House and the Senate get together to certify the electoral votes. Are we going to have another insurrection? If Donald Trump loses, you can bet your ass he's going to want people to show up and do that. Are his supporters going to be stupid enough to do that, knowing that, you know, a couple thousand of them have been arrested from doing it last time and about, I don't know, 600 of them are in federal prison right now because they did that. Some of them are in there for 22 years. It's like, you know, I... <laughs> but look, the, the, the overall point of this, and, and these efforts are going to intensify over the next 100 days. Why are these efforts going to intensify by Republicans over the next 100 days? Because they know, a lot of them know that Kamala Harris is going to win. They know that once Joe Biden dropped out, now Donald Trump is the weird old guy with dementia in the race who's responsible for overturning Roe versus Wade. And he picked J.D. Vance to be his vice president who favors a nationwide abortion ban and thinks that women who don't have children are psychotic sociopaths and crazy cat ladies. That's not a recipe to win a nationwide election ever. It just isn't. It might have been in the early 1800s. I don't know, but it's not now. And 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 Trump and JD Vance are also freaking out that everybody just keeps describing their ticket as being weird. These two weird white guys. And they are. They are extremely weird. Both of these guys are extremely weird. I mean, whether it's true or not, J.D. Vance is going to be tar he's, he's going to be painted as a couch fucker for the rest of his life. He did actually share dolphin porn on his Twitter account, and and part of the base of his own party is you know engaging in racist attacks against him and his wife because his wife is of Indian descent and she's brown. She's not white. And I can't remember who it was. I saw some guy on some right-wing podcast the other day who just said flat out, he was like, how do we expect that J.D. Vance is going to protect white identity when he married a non-white woman and one of his kids is named Vivek? <laughs> and on our side, it's like now we've got Kamala Harris who, you know was the Biden administration's point person uh, on abortion rights and reproductive health care rights following the Dobbs decision overturning Roe versus Wade. And in the five or six statewide uh, referendums that have taken place to, to, to codify abortion rights, uh, even in the deepest of red states, those, those ballot initiatives have won 60 to 40. I mean, it's been a 20 to 25 point margin in every time that's come up on a state ballot. And this time around, it's going to be on the on on the state ballots of thirteen or fourteen more states. A bunch of those are red states, including Florida. It, you know, which is going to drive Democrats and it's going to drive women to the polls. You think you think women are going to vote in favor of abortion rights and then vote for the candidate who took away their abortion rights with his vice presidential candidate who favors a nationwide abortion ban? No, those women are going to, they're either going to vote for Kamala Harris or they're not going to vote for president at all, which again, great. <laughs> but the point of all of this stuff is to sow doubt in the 2024 election results. You can't trust them. You can't trust the election results 2024. And... Okay, but then what are you going to do? Um, you know, Kamala Harris is not going to throw the election to the House of Representatives so that they elect Donald Trump when she won the election. That's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. They can file all the lawsuits that they want to, and we're going to talk about some of those here in a minute. Um, they can't prevent what's going to happen if Kamala Harris wins. 
they can maybe delay it a little bit. They can muddy the waters a little bit. They can't prevent it. They can't outright stop it. That mechanism doesn't exist. So they're going to sow as much doubt and distrust in our election process as they can, as they did following the 2020 election. And, but it was a new thing back then. You know, no president had ever done that before. You know, spearheaded a nationwide movement to overturn the results of a free and fair presidential election that had never happened in our country's history before, ever. 2020 was the first time. They've been studying since then. They are going to have their ducks in a row more than they did last time. You know, and the Heritage Foundation a couple of weeks ago uh, held a conference where they preemptively declared the results of the 2024 election to be illegitimate. And that was before that was before Joe Biden stepped down and endorsed Kamala Harris as the Democratic nominee for president. They preemptively declared the results of the 2024 election to be illegitimate. The balls on these people. <laughs> you know, and another thing is it's like, yeah, they're going to they're going to these 70 gomer chuds in these counties are going to do everything they can to muck up uh, and just cause confusion and chaos uh, on election night 2024 and in the days after. But all of these state officials and, and all of the election attorneys who work for Democrats are aware of that. They've been aware of that for a very long time. They will be ready for it. Uh, they will be ready for it. Uh, Democratic uh, election attorney Mark Elias, who was on the other side of almost every single one of Rudy Giuliani's lawsuits uh, following the 2020 election, he says, I think we're going to see mass refusals to certify the election in November. Everything we are seeing about this election is that the other side is more organized, more ruthless, and more prepared than they were in 2020. That's fine. And here's the art. Here's the line in the article where I was just like, I don't know, maybe you guys could have followed up on this part a little bit more. While refusals and delays of certification have not held up in court. And they don't come back to that in this article. They don't come back to it at all. That first part of that sentence to me tells me that those have been 100% unsuccessful. Refusals to certify and delays of certification have been 100% unsuccessful in the courts. That seems significant to me. But, you know, what do I know? I'm just a dumb country lawyer. Uh, their Republicans are going to do everything they can to fuck with this election. And those results or those, those efforts are going to increase dramatically now that Kamala Harris is the Democratic nominee um, because they know she's going to win. I can't remember what that historian's name is, Alan Licht, Lichtberg or some The guy with the 13 keys... Uh, he's like, I'm not going to make a final, uh, a, a final prediction on the 2024 election until after the Democratic National Committee. But he's like, Democrats already have six of these keys in their favor. There's only three of the 13 keys that are against them. Um, he's like, but he said, there's going to have to be a lot that goes wrong over the next 98 days for Kamala Harris to lose this election. And these efforts on the part of Republicans, I mean, just look at the last week. Look at the last week and a half. Kamala Harris comes into the race. Within the first 36 hours, just small dollar donations with Act Blue, she raised over $140 million. And then that, that first Sunday when Joe Biden dropped out, in a matter of hours, black women organized and held a Zoom call there were 44,000 women on that call. They raised over a million and a half dollars. The following day, 25,000 black men held a Zoom call, and they raised over 1.3 million, I think. 
that Thursday was when uh, women, white, excuse me, white women broke Zoom. There were 200,000 of them on a Zoom call. They raised $12 million. Last night, we had the, uh, the white dudes for Harris. 180,000 white guys on a, on a Zoom call, and we raised over $4 million. Over 150,000 new voter registrations have occurred since Kamala announced that she was going to run for president a week and a half ago. Uh, her campaign has signed up 170,000 campaign volunteers. 170,000 campaign volunteers. That's insane. Two-thirds of the people who have donated to Kamala Harris, it's the first time they've ever donated to a political campaign. I mean, I made the comment in a TikTok earlier today. It's like last week, two million people woke up and looked at their phones and was like, oh, shit, we could win this thing and started donating and signed up to be volunteers and got on Zoom calls. She has erased Donald Trump's lead nationwide and in all of the critical swing states that I mentioned earlier, Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, North Carolina, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. She has erased his lead. It's neck and neck now. And she's been in the race for a week. Trump's been campaigning for two years and he held he held that he held that office for four years. She's gonna win this race because she's just gonna keep adding people and adding people and adding people and adding people and adding people. Her campaign speech is twenty minutes long. She gets on the stage, she fires people up, she tells them to get to work, and then she leaves. When Donald Trump holds his campaign rallies, his campaign speeches are an hour and a half to two hours long. And he talks about Hannibal Lecter. He talks about electric boats with giant batteries and sharks and crazy bullshit. He tells Christians to come out and vote one more time. That's the last time you'll ever have to vote. His campaign speeches get news coverage for the wrong reasons because he says crazy dumb shit. Her campaign speeches get coverage because she's firing up women to vote for her to restore the rights that they had under Roe versus Wade nationwide. It's insane. It's just, however, um, Republicans, uh, so, all right, I'm going to do these in kind of reverse order here. Um, Republicans, they've adopted, so they've been passing, since 2020, Republicans in red states have been passing incredibly restrictive voting laws, which doesn't really affect presidential politics that much because we have the Electoral College. Uh, those were red states that a Democrat was never going to win anyway those restrictive laws can and probably will have an impact for statewide elections uh, and for congressional and Senate elections. But, you know, we're going to have to deal with that stuff after, uh, after this election. But Republicans have made litigation and lawsuits uh, part of their strategy for uh, the 2020 election, the 2022 election, certainly for the 2024 election. Uh, it's it, it, Litigation has become as important as campaigning and electing candidates uh, for Repu Republicans. It's like they, but again, it's like that goes back to the thing that I started off with. They don't have any use for elections anymore. They don't give two shits what the American people think or the majority of American people think anymore because little baby Jesus in his tuxedo t-shirt is sitting on their shoulder giving them the divine right uh, to take over the American government and force 
all of us to live the way they think we ought to be forced to live, even though none of them actually live that way either. And the evidence that we have for that is the fact that all of these, you know, good Republican, devout Christian evangelicals held their national convention in Milwaukee. And while all of these straight white Republican men were in Milwaukee, Grindr crashed. The gay hookup app Grindr crashed because it was overloaded with activity from Milwaukee. So it's like, I don't know. They love Dick almost as much as they love Jesus. I'm whatever, but it's just, they're just so repressed. They're all just so incredibly repressed. And it's like, I, I just, I can't just on a philosophical level. I can't imagine living my life being so, obsessed with controlling the lives of other people whose lives don't affect me in any way, shape, or form. I've never really been able to wrap my head around that in a, in a way that satisfies me in some way. It's like, you know, I read a lot of articles about like the psychology of Trump supporters and authoritarian personalities and, you know, stuff like that. It's just like, why, why, why? Why would you spend so much time obsessing over other people's lives when those people's lives literally have zero impact on you? Obsessed with forcing other people to live the way that you think they ought to live because you've got this little book of fables. You know, and they do this, it's like, I mean, I'm an atheist, but I went to church when I was a kid. They do this, the, the, the way they go out into the world, and especially into politics, completely discounts and negates and is the exact opposite of, from, near, from what I can tell, the actual teachings of Jesus Christ. Love thy neighbor. Turn the other cheek. You know, I just, I don't know, man. You know, it's easier for a rich man to crawl through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into heaven. I know I mangled that, but what you get the point. Um, I've just, I've never been able to understand the obsession with controlling the lives of other people so much. I just don't get it, you, you know. And, and they're just so frail and fragile in their whiteness, you know, banning books and banning African-American history and banning the teaching of the Civil War. And they just want to ban everything, everything that makes them even remotely uncomfortable. When in reality, I guess what makes them uncomfortable is the truth. LGBTQ people exist. Gay people exist. Lesbian people exist. Trans people exist. Black people exist. <laughs> Just I <laughs> banning books about those things is not going to change the reality that those people are here. They exist. They've been here for thousands of years. They've been here longer than the United States of America has been here. And it just, it's just mind boggling. I don't get it. It just seems like you're setting yourself up for a lifetime of a lifetime of conflict and frustration and, you know, a lifetime of millions of people thinking that you're just a dick. You're just an asshole. You're just an intolerant dickhead. And who wants to go through life that way? I mean, why would you choose to just be unhappy for your entire life. I have to stamp out the LGBTQ community. First of all, good luck with that. Second of all, it's you're just going to be unhappy for the rest of your life if that's your goal. If that's your goal, you're going to be unhappy every single day because you are never, ever, ever, ever going to accomplish that goal. It's just not going to happen. I, it's like, I don't know, it's probably been a decade that gay marriage has been legal. Maybe, I think that Obergefell maybe came out in 2015. 
uh, that Supreme Court case, and they want to they want to do away with the rights of LGBTQ people to get married. They want to take away that right that they've had for a decade. I mean, they already took away a fifty year constitutional right for women, the right to abortion. I'm hoping we can fix that with this election. I mean, if we send Kamala Harris to the White House with a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate, first, I'm incredibly grateful to to Nancy Pelosi for handing over uh, the leadership reins to Hakeem Jeffries and his people, uh, a generational shift. I really think it's time for Chuck Schumer to do the same thing because when I think of the word fighter, the first person that pops into my head is not Chuck Schumer. He's had control of the Senate for 2020. There has not been a single J6 investigation. There's not been a single investigation into Trump. There's not been a single investigation in the Senate into Jared Kushner and his $2 billion. What the fuck has he been doing? I know he's been appointing judges. I appreciate that. But what the fuck else has Chuck Schumer been doing for the last four years? Especially the last two, since Republicans took over the House. You know you're not going to get any big legislation passed, so maybe focus on some investigations in the Senate. He's done jack shit. Put forth legislation to fix some of these election things that I've been talking about. Send it over to the House. If it passes, great. If it doesn't, You've made Republicans vote against election fairness. I just, I don't understand what Chuck Schumer does every day. I have no idea. But um, anyway, I got sidetracked on that stuff a little bit. Um, All right. Well, whatever. I didn't get to two thirds of the things I wanted to talk about. So maybe we'll save them for another episode. Uh, So we'll do some housekeeping things. Um. My brother, Falcon, and our buddy, Wiseacre, they've put up, uh, they put up five, five new designs on uh, our merch store, hawkmerchstore.com, uh, over the last week or so. And uh, one is like a, like a family crest, and it's for Mar-a-Lago, and underneath it, it says, Mar-a-Lago, fuck yourself. <laughs> It's fantastic, man. I'm I'm waiting for mine to show up. Absolutely fantastic. And then um, I had been compiling a new list of nicknames for Donald Trump. I mean, we had our first our first round of merch and shirts and stuff that had you know uh, our first list of nicknames. You know, Mango Mussolini and stuff like that. And I had a second list that included, you know, like Pervert Hoover and Groper Cleveland and a few other good ones. So we've got round two of that. That merch is up on the, on the merch store. Um, but then they did three. My brother came up with this absolutely fantastic design uh, that just said Kamala. Uh, that's up on the merch store right now. And we've got two other election-related ones up there now, too. And... So I should let you guys know this as well. We're trying to figure out how to make that a fundraiser uh, to get Kamala elected. And we did the Pride merch fundraiser in the month of June. And our, our proceeds for, uh, for that were $35,400 and change. And we just made that donation because that was to a nonprofit automatically instantly tax deductible well it turns out that contributions to campaigns and political action committees are not tax deductible and so it's like if we raised 50 grand and we donated 50 grand my brother and i would still have to pay taxes on that 50 grand and so we're trying to figure out how to make that work so that we can do a fundraiser um without simultaneously you know getting completely screwed by the irs so hopefully we'll figure that out over the next week or so um, and be able to announce another fundraiser. We're working on that, so we'll see what happens. Um, but please go check out hawkmerchstore.com. We got a whole bunch of new stuff up there, and it's, it's, it's really awesome. I mean, my brother and Wiseacre, you know, just continue to hit it out of the park on stuff and do a really awesome job. And um, 
incredibly grateful for both of those guys. Uh, so I'm recording this on Tuesday, you know, who the hell knows what the rest of this week is going to bring. Um, it's not going to be boring. And, you know, we got three and a half months to go, man. And the Republicans are going to lose their shit. We are going to start seeing Republicans get desperate because it's going to, I mean, the month of August at the Democratic National Convention is the 19th through the 22nd. And that is going to be 24-7 coverage of Kamala Harris and her VP pick. And I hope she picks Josh Shapiro from Pennsylvania to be her running mate. Um, and she's going to get a big bump in the polls after that. She's, I think she's going to start pulling ahead of Trump in the polls before the convention even starts. So like over the next two and a half weeks, three weeks. And then the convention's going to happen and that gap is going to start to widen even more. And we're going to have two months until the election day. And that's when Republicans are going to start losing it. They're going to start getting desperate. They're going to start lashing out and doing and saying stupid things uh, because they're going to start to see this election slip away from Donald Trump. And I think, I think if Kamala wins, the Democrats will keep the house or keep the Senate and they will take the house. I thought they were going to take the house anyway. Um, I think if Trump wins, he's probably going to have the Senate and the House as well. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. But there's so much riding on this election, it's not even funny, man. Um, so get involved where you can. Get on these Zoom calls uh, if you can. Donate as much as you can to Kamala. Uh, I mean, she's already got almost a half a billion dollars to last for the next month. So I don't think money's going to be an issue, but... Um, figure out a way to get involved if you can and volunteer. And um, I'm looking for some of that stuff right now. I mean, I live in California, so it's like, it's not like I can go knock on my neighbor's doors, you know? Everybody who lives within 50 miles of me is voting for Kamala Harris anyway, so, but we'll figure something out. So uh, thanks again, everybody, for subscribing. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. If you're hearing this one, um, please go check out our podcast page at hawkpodcasts.com uh, for the other episodes that we put out every week. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, take care and be safe. Mm-hmm.